Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Amir Karam, board certified facial plastic surgeon and founder and creator of Karam MD Skin. I specialize in facial rejuvenation, which basically means I help people look as young as they feel. And on today's episode of Skin School, we're gonna talk about a very important topic, one that I think is critical to great anti-aging skincare routines, and that is the do's and don'ts of vitamin C. All right, folks, so here's, here's a scoop. You know, I'm all about efficacy. I am all about seeing results. As a surgeon, it's hard not to. I mean, I literally go into a surgical case, three hours later, the person comes out looking 20 years younger. It's how I'm wired. I like to see change and I like to see results. Drove me crazy for years and years and years how difficult it was to create change in skin. So I took it upon myself, developed CaramMD Skin, developed the trifecta to make that process easy. Along the way, I learned a ton about the importance of skincare, but also the importance of certain active ingredients and what really makes skincare hum, what makes skincare change the skin in a real way. And what it comes down to is active ingredients. And what active ingredients, the way I interpret it, and the way I'm gonna describe it, is those ingredients that get down to the cellular level and create a change that is manifested by physical cascade of events. So for example, when we talk about vitamin C, what are we talking about? Well, everyone understands vitamin C is an antioxidant. What is an antioxidant? It soaks up free radicals, it soaks up toxins, it you know, helps with uh, UV light in terms of, uh, of uh, preventing and, and uh, protecting against you know, the changes that happen from UV light exposure, sun damage to the skin, et cetera. But what's happening at the genetic level, which is slightly different than what's happening with this molecule kind of floating around in terms of protection, it's actually creating an uptick in the production of collagen, and that happens at the fibroblast cell level, and it also diminishes the production of melanin at the level of the melanocyte. So these are like big time changes. And in the skincare sort of world of tools in our toolbox, ingredients that we can put in the stew to make the changes that we're looking for, vitamin C, retinol, niacinamide, which happens to be vitamin A, B, and C, in addition to a number of other ones, peptides and growth factors, are really, really important. And unfortunately, there's so much misguidance and so much misinformation and so much confusion around some of these really beautiful and important components of a good anti-aging skincare routine that people miss out. But I'm gonna talk to you very frankly about how that's not the case. All right. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about the, the do's first, and then we're gonna talk about the don'ts. Okay, so let's put it into context. Why vitamin C is so important? I already talked about the protection effect, but it helps with fine lines and wrinkles, it helps with discoloration, it helps with brightness. I mean, trust me, it's powerful stuff. So do number one is use it. <laughs> use it, make sure it's part of your routine. I'm just gonna say this right out of the gates and I'll probably reiterate this towards the end. It's so important that I literally have a three-step routine called the trifecta, cleansing. Step two, vitamin C. Step three, all in one, which includes like 20 different actives. But I gave it an entire dedicated step to vitamin C because it's so important in creating the anti-aging changes we want. So number one is do use it. Number two is use it consistently. Use it every single day. It's so interesting, and I'm positive you're guilty of this. <laughs> if you are, let's, let's uh, not get defensive about it, but let's laugh about it and know that this is a habitual issue that I think happens with skincare. People bounce from product to product. People bounce from ingredient to ingredient constantly. They'll try something for a little bit, they'll hear from their friend how it should be this way, then they'll skip this and go on to the other one. Next thing you know, you've got a drawer full of half-used products, and meanwhile, you got nowhere with them. Consistently using the right actives is the way to great skin. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. Simple as that, simple as that. It's like, you know, saying, you know what, jogging is good for your heart, and you do it every single day. You go on, I mean, of course, you gotta take breaks and rest, etc. but let's just say you get on a regular routine, you're doing it. What's gonna happen after a year? Your heart's gonna be in amazing shape. You're gonna 
physically be in great shape. You're gonna be able to run for miles because you did it consistently over time. Same thing with skincare. If you're putting the right actives on your skin, your skin's gonna get better and better over time. So consistently using it every single day is key, especially with, with bioactives like vitamin C that are working at the genetic level and changing the expression of a cell. Because the minute you stop, that expression diminishes and you go backwards, right? Same thing happens with your body. I mean, you take a few weeks off, a month off of working out or running, you're, everything atrophies, you get out of shape and you're kind of back to square one. You don't want that. You want to start building and going forward as time goes on. Next, use vitamin C with a sunscreen. So do use a sunscreen. Very, very important. The reason is when you're using these type of actives, there's two aspects to them. Number one, generally speaking, both retinol and vitamin C, they're sensitive to, to sun. I'm not saying your skin is necessarily sensitive, although it can be. But what I'm saying is the actual molecule is sensitive to light. So you're gonna deactivate it if you're, if you're putting it on and just running out the door to get exposure. The second aspect of that is, yeah, sometimes these things can be a little bit harsh on the skin and, and your skin can be a little bit more sensitive to the sun. The remedy is sunscreen. The remedy of, in general, complementing any type of important anti-aging skincare routine is sunscreen anyway. Like you gotta, I mean, what's the point of, of you know, taking two steps forward and two steps back? That's what happens when you get totally exposed to sun and you're trying to improve the changes that are associated with, with aging because sun is the greatest accelerator of skin aging. Believe it or not, it's responsible for nearly 70, 80% of the changes that happen to the skin. And we see this with people who live in the Northern Hemisphere, their skin looks way better because they don't see as much sun. So this is a known, uh, you know, an absolute known here. Keep the skin out of the sun, use the vitamin C's, use the retinols, don't even think about it. Next, do. Please do use this in conjunction with retinol. Do yourself a favor, get all the stuff that's available to you, get, it, get the most out of it. And just to be clear, I feel so strongly about it. Like I said, I combine retinol and vitamin C in the trifecta. I mean, it's, it's brought in together. Now, I'm gonna break this out to a caveat for, for a moment. If you're using like a, a standalone retinol and you're using a standalone vitamin C that's not meant to be formulated together the way the trifecta is, chances are if you use them too close to one another, the pHs will be off, the products will inter interact with each other, your skin might feel more sensitive, more redness, more inflammation, and depending on the pH, you might even like cancel each other's effects out. So it is really, really important to use them, but here's a basic couple rules, space them out. Generally speaking, and I can't speak for every product because everything is, there's so many different ones and it gets confusing, but the concept is space it out for at least 30 minutes between the time you put retinol on and on vitamin C. Okay, so give it there, and usually you put the retinol first and then the vitamin C, but I guess that's, that's up for debate, but it's not that important. Some people recommend nighttime retinol, daytime vitamin C, you know, that type of thing. Again, however you want to approach it, however the, the particular brands you're using, how they marry together and, and your skin can tolerate, figure it out, but use them together and use them appropriately, but space them out. Because more than likely, you're not gonna love having them on the skin within five minutes of each other. And that's, I think, where a lot of this vicious rumor about the, these two not um, coupling well together started from, is because when people do use them, you know, in separate brands and different things like that, they get kind of like, they get your face starts to get angry. And then you back off and you say, oh my God, who wants this, right? Another huge reason why I combine them in a way that they were meant to be combined, so that way no one has to think about this. But if you do that, if you got separate ones, just space it out, okay? Simple as that. Either 30 minutes or 12 hours, whatever it is, just, just keep them se separated. The next one is have patience, okay? Patience is very important. Folks, Rome wasn't built in a day. Your skin's not gonna go back 10 years in, in a month after you're using these things. There is a, there's a methodology, there is a you know, sort of change that has to happen slowly. And as I mentioned, the, the running analogy, the fitness analogy, it's gonna take time for, you, for your skin to show those, the changes that you're looking for. But just know when you're putting the right stuff on, week after week, month after month, year after year, your skin's getting better and better and better. So you know, give yourself at least three to six months and then 
you know, judge. I will guarantee you if you're using a quality vitamin C, you're gonna see changes sooner than that, but you're gonna see awesome changes in three to six months. So be patient with it. Again, don't just bail on it. So don't quit on it. That's really, really important. Another do is make sure you buy a vitamin C that comes in a dark bottle and you store it in a dark and cool place. Vitamin C, as I mentioned, is sensitive to light. It actually deactivates it. Air can, can oxidize it. So make sure your, your lids are tight. It's sitting in a cool, dark, dry place. So don't get a vitamin C that's in a clear bottle. If you see it in a clear bottle, go for a different brand because it's not gonna work well for you. Or even if it's a lighter, lighter bottle where sun can get into it. It has to be a UV resistant type of a bottle. Super important, like ours is in a black bottle. You know, so there's no light possibly can get in there. All right, the last do is please folks, use it on your neck, use it around your eyes. This skin is really thin, the neck skin is really thin, but it's all in the visual frame. Why would you just wanna improve the face when you're gonna let the eyelids and the neck age? A lot of times people think that, oh, I need a separate eye cream or a neck, separate neck cream, you don't. Most of this stuff can be used on the eyes and the neck. You might, you know, if you're using a full strength retinol, you might have to like, be a little bit more careful, use it every other day or if you're, you know, just a few times a week or whatever it is. Neck is a little bit different. Again, the trifecta was designed to be an eye cream and a neck cream in addition to the face cream. I mean, these were all kind of like engineered and formulated to be this way. But most retinols and most vitamin Cs, you can put on your eyes and you can put it on your neck. Retinol full strength can be a little bit harsh. We use a micro dose technique and we split dose it so it's AM and PM and it's encapsulated so it's a lot less harsh on the skin. So I can't speak of all retinols being able to use it that way, but vitamin C's generally speaking, use it on your eyes, use it on your neck. It should be well tolerated. However, if the concentrations are really high, you know, like you're using a 20% concentration of, of ascorbic acid, that could still be a little bit rough on the skin. So back off on the concentration a little bit. It's okay to not use a really high concentration that's, that's you know, keeps you from being able to, to treat your neck, right? I mean, it's better to, to use a little bit lower concentration, but get the full benefit from top to bottom. All right, so here are some don'ts. I'm gonna reiterate, don't use retinol and vitamin C at the same time, you will get discouraged and you'll stop. Don't use vitamin Cs with the alpha hydroxy acids, like glycolic acids. It can be too harsh on the skin, you're gonna get discouraged, you're gonna back off on it. Don't use too much of it. I mean, usually these things come in droppers, some of them come in pumps, but basically you just wanna cover the tops of your finger, a little, a little goes a long way in most formulations. And you just want a little bit to, to cover this area. But if you put too much on, it's just like anything else. Too much of a good thing isn't always a good thing. This could end up making you very sensitive and red and, and discouraged. So you back off and you toss the vitamin C and you know, you're missing out on an awesome. Better to use smaller amounts, lower concentrations and use them regularly, consistently and get a little bit out. That's like the idea of like working out, you know, a little bit a day as opposed to working out a lot you know, one day out of the week. A little bit of a day, every day is better than, than you know, one day a week kind of a thing. So consistency, a little bit at a time, get your skin acclimated, get your skin enjoying it, and make sure that you don't stop because of the harsh effects of it. I mentioned this earlier, but I'm gonna say it again. Don't leave the top off these things. They're very sensitive to oxidation. You gotta make sure the lids are tight. You gotta make sure that they're in a nice uh, dark, dark place, like put them in a cabinet or something like that. Don't leave them in front of a window. Very important. And finally, folks, don't quit. No matter what you do, get on a vitamin C, use it regularly, and you'll see the changes happen you know, as, uh, as time goes forward. Very, very important, do yourself a favor. All right, folks, so as you can see, there's a, you know, generally speaking, a lot of rules and things to, to worry about and think about, but it's worth the knowledge, it's worth the understanding that vitamin C is a key player in your anti-aging routine. I could not imagine developing a skincare routine without vitamin C, like I said, that's why we included it as step two in the three-step trifecta. But the idea is synergy and ultimately consistency. So make sure if you're not using the CaramMD products that you're carefully curating these two to make sure that they work together, vitamin C along, because there's the same things I'm saying about retinol not, not jiving with it, niacinamide sometimes they say doesn't jive with it either. So there's there's that aspect. So you gotta make sure that you know your products are lining up in a way that, that physically works. And ultimately what's so, so important is clinical studies. You know, for example, with Quench, which is our version of the vitamin C, it's not just ascorbic acid. 
It's three different types of vitamin C, both water and fat soluble, to make sure that it absorbs very efficiently into the skin and work really, really well. We wanted something that was better than basic ascorbic acid. So what do we do? We sent, send off the trifecta for clinical studies and it shows it blew the study out of the water. It's like discoloration, fine lines and wrinkles, texture, brightness, all that stuff improved. And that gives us the comment. That's why I'm even talking about it because I know the stuff works. You wanna make sure that if you're gonna invest the, both the time and the money in a skincare product, that you're using something that actually works. I think clinical studies are very, very important because they're done by third parties and you can't make those claims you know, about study results, et cetera, without the studies to prove them. And these are blinded studies. No one, you know, knows what the product is. No one knows who's, who's this man. These are just subjects that are told to do it in a certain way and being measured by, by machines on the face to see the changes that are happening. So very objective and not very subjective, obviously, is very important. But at the end, folks, knowledge is power. Videos like this, I try to keep it straight so you can understand the pros and cons of everything. And uh, more importantly, get this particular myth of not being able to combine these two things out of the out of the way. I mean, what a terrible rumor that is being uh, being spread about this because so many people avoid the use of these together because of that. So that's key to me. These that's what this video series is about. If you like this type of information, follow the CareMD blog that gets sent to your email. Um, basically, it's literally just all skin tips and wellness and all this kind of stuff that I, I write and talk about. All right, folks. Um, if you enjoyed it. Hit like as always. If you're new to the video and you're not uh, a subscriber yet, um, join the four or five hundred thousand other subscribers and and be a part of this. Knowledge is so important. If you uh, if you have some questions about stuff, drop it. I'm more than happy, as you know, to uh, answer as many of them as I possibly can. And ultimately, share this with some friends and family. Let's get the word out. Like I said, nothing is more important in this crazy, confusing space than straightforward knowledge to help guide you and make good decisions both for yourself and for your, your uh, you know, bank accounts. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed. And uh, until next time, next episode of Skin School, Dr. Amir Karam.